I've got one hell of a tale to share with you all today. Every autumn, people gather together, usually with their kitties, and they enjoy hay rides and mazes and collect the symbol of Halloween itself, the humble pumpkin. People love to bring the big orange gourd home and carve or paint spooky, comedic, or unique faces into the pumpkin. They add a candle or some other light and use it to light up and project the images. But how did jack-o'-lanterns become the premier symbol of spooky Season. It's a strange story with just two protagonists, or antagonists really, because neither are exactly idols of benevolence. Our characters are the devil and an old blacksmith by the name of Stingy Jack. Quick disclaimer, the Stingy Jack origin story is very very old and primarily sped through royal tradition in Ireland, so I have taken the general gist that seems to align with most, if not all, of the popular versions of this tale and, and weaved it into a short story that I hope you all will enjoy. But first, welcome to Creepy Cassetti, your place for horror in reality and beyond. I'm your host Dee, and if this kind of content interests you, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you'll know every time I drop another video. Especially if your interests lie in urban legends and mythology, stay tuned because there are many more videos like this to come. I want to know about your Halloween plans in the comment section below. Unfortunately, I'm like 99% sure this video is not going to air until after Halloween, but for some people, Halloween is a year-round thing. I know it is for me. I love creepy stuff, which is why we are here today. Now back to the story. Long ago in Ireland, where Halloween and jack o lanterns originate, there lived a stingy old blacksmith by the name of Jack. Jack rather enjoyed his drink, to the point of fairly consistent drunkenness. Jack was a devious old man, and he was not held in high regard by the people of his town. Well, word must have traveled pretty far even back then because the devil heard about the man's malignant personality traits and he thought that Jack would be the perfect specimen to add to his collection of ill-fated souls. One day, Jack decided after a long day of hammering molten metal, he could use a little drink. So he dried a piece of steel on his soot-stained apron, dropped it into a bucket, wiped his hands on his ragged sackcloth pants, pulled up the bottom of his shirt and used it to wipe the way the sweat and fine black ash stuck to his ridden face. He decided to have a little pregame prior to heading to the tavern, so he took a few swigs from a murky chalice and then set on his way down the dirt road towards the middle of town. When he was just in view of the dimly lit tavern, he was stopped. Stopped by a creature the height of one and a half men wearing a crimson robe, finely made and hooded. He held in his hairy hand an obsidian scepter. In the top of it engraved a scene of gold and flame. Jack could only suppose that beneath the hood and robe covering his feet that he was hiding horns, hooves, and maybe even a grotesque and curling spike of a tail. He knew he was in the presence of the Dark One. The devil spoke a deep gravelly whisper that was harsh to the ear but clear to understand. Side note, we're gonna pretend this conversation is being had in Gaelic, a beautiful language that I don't speak unfortunately, so I am not even going to attempt an accent. You'll have to use that big wonderful full imagination of yours, Rondo. I've come to collect. Jack's brashness bordered on utter stupidity when the drink flowed through him and he was annoyed that his check had been impeded. To Satan, he simply slurred, collect on what? I don't owe you a thing. He spat at the devil's feet. The devil looked at the man, clearly irritated with his insolence. He was used to disrespect from the weakling humans, but it only made him more drawn to the idea of breaking his soul. He was going to enjoy the slow, agonizing torture awaiting the damned man. How vile, how contemptuous. He was itching to make it back to his throne of bone and rot. It's your time to go. We both know you're not headed upstairs, so allow me to save you the travel. The devil took his scepter and used it to slice through the chill air, opening what could only be described as a portal or a slit in the fabric of existence. In the opening, Jack could see a molten river, hands popping up from the fiery liquid, horrifying screams streaming out of the opening of the portal, and grotesque creatures, obsidian black, with sharp claws and teeth, flew around, pecking at heads that made it for just a moment to breach the surface. For the first time, Jack felt fear. 
this was real. He was really going to be taken hell. And suddenly he wished he'd spent more time in prayer. He had to find a way to prolong his stead, just long enough for him to devise a plan that could distract the devil or at least give him some time to get away. Well, all right, I'll go, but please allow a dying man his final wish. The devil gave a man a suspicious look and stroked his blue back beard while he momentarily pondered the request. A final pint to soothe an old wretched soul, Jack said, looking down, feigning timid sadness. Well, it turns out the devil has a soft spot for final wishes, especially when they involve a bit of vice. Well, we'll go on have a pipe and then we must be on our way i don't have all day there are many more just like you and worse so the two beings made their way inside the tavern the devil momentarily shifted to blend in with the humans and not draw attention they sat next to each other on the rawhide and wooden stools and flagged the barkeep down for their drinks the tavern had a homey feel filled with people from all over the village enjoying the company of friends and family members there was murmuring all around smiles passed between folks pretty barmaids brought pints of ale and hearty stews to the patrons the occasional fight broke out and was quickly dispatched by the barkeep jack and the devil enjoyed their conversation each trying to one-up the other with stories of how truly dreadful they could be under other circumstances the two may have ended the night friends however as the hours wound down more and more people scurried off to their own homes or up the stairs to their accommodations the devil looked to the old blacksmith and said it's time to go pay your tab and we'll be off jack true to his moniker was going to do what he could to avoid paying the bill so somehow he convinced his dark companion to turn into a piece of silver to pay off the night's drink the devil shifted to a shiny silver coin jack had a sudden idea it would cost him a coin of his own after all but it was an opportunity to live a little longer he pulled a piece of silver from his coin purse and placed it on the bar he took the devil coin and slipped it into the pocket opposite his change purse where he also kept a silver cross the devil was rendered helpless unable to use his powers and therefore unable to shift back to his normal form from the depths of jack's pocket it came the familiar gravelly voice you tricked me was this your plan all along no it just came to me really jack continued his trek back home arguing with the devil the whole way when he was almost to the front door he gave the devil a proposition if he let him go the devil could not bother him again for one year the devil desperate to regain his freedom agreed to the plan thinking what's another year for an immortal being jack removed the coin from his pocket placed it on the ground and watched the dark one and shift to his original form. His face contorted in anger and he swiftly snapped his fingers and disappeared. Jack went inside and slept like the dead, feeling victorious. For one year, life continued on as usual. Jack's ways didn't change at all. He was as miserly as ever and his reputation continued as one of the meanest men in town. Things were going so normally that he almost forgot about his agreement. But 365 days following their night of debauchery, a familiar dark figure once again stopped his journey to the tavern it's time to go old man you've had your fun and now it's time for me to have mine said the devil i know said jack but he wasn't going that easy once again he had to think fast he knew he wasn't going to be able to talk satan into another drink but what could he do how could he once again get out of this situation just a few paces away was a towering apple tree its branches bowed accommodating the weight of the fruit some the size of a small child's head there at the top was a huge huge crimson apple. The moon glinted off the piece of fruit, almost making it glow. Jack thought this may be the opportunity he was looking for. He feigned defeat for a moment and started walking towards the familiar portal. Wait, before we go, I would love just one delicious apple for the road. I'll never have the opportunity to, eat, to enjoy such a glorious treat. Allow me just one final comforting taste. The devil thought for a moment and conceded. Fine blacksmith, retrieve your fruit and let's go. Jack walked towards the tree and made himself a pitiful spectacle, attempting to climb the tree to retrieve the perfect fruit. Satan, tired of watching the man fail at his task, decided to retrieve fruit for him. This isn't taking entirely too long. The devil walked towards the tree. Here, I will get it for you. The devil shimmied up the tree, not paying much attention to what was going on just below him. As Satan was retrieving the apple, Jack carved a cross into the tree beneath him, once again effectively trapping the dark being in the tree's canopy. The devil 
Michael is furious, more furious at himself for once again ending up in such a sicky situation, but also incredibly frustrated with Jack's audacity. Curse you, Jack. Jack gave a slight grin, baring his few remaining teeth. He was clearly proud of his quick thinking. He made moves to walk away from the area, making it seem like he had every intention of leaving the being where he sat, helpless. Wait, what do you want this time? How can I get you to scratch out this, this symbol? Jack turned back, looked Satan in the eye and said, you can leave me alone for the remainder of my life and when it comes time for me to die, you must promise not to collect my soul. Devil gave a reluctant grunt of agreement. Jack scratched across out of the bottom of the tree and the devil came down. The two beings shook on their agreement and went their separate ways. A few years went by and it was finally time for old Jack to make his transition out of the world. His soul attempted to ascend to heaven and God was like, it's gonna be a no for me dog, and pointed the man towards Hell's Gate. Satan met him there. Jack groveled at the Dark One's feet. He had nowhere to go and his past since departure had been filled with nothing but darkness and it was terrifying to him. Even more terrifying than boiling in the molten lake for all of eternity. The devil stayed true to his word and rejected Jack entrance but maybe that one night of drunken debauchery stuck with the devil because he took pity on Jack and pulled a coal from his eternal flame to help light Jack's way. Jack needed to find something to help him keep the little coal safe so he pulled a gourd from dirt and carved coals into it to allow the light to shine. So now he spends eternity roaming the earth with nothing more than his Jack lantern. Some legends suggest that Jack is still up to his old tricks and will commit devious pranks on people who do not put out their own jack-o'-lanterns. The scary faces are carved into pumpkins to keep Jack and other spirits away from people. So what do you think about this tale of jack-o'-lantern? Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned for more creepy myths and legends. I'm grateful for all of you who stay to the end. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for our next video. Bye guys.